Welcome to section four, understanding dashboard. Now finally we will visualize our data. Whatever we were doing in the last videos, we were just visualizing the data in our debug window. But now we're gonna have a dashboard where we can see our variables, our data in a visual format. So let's start with the dashboard. I don't have any presentation material for the dashboard, but I'll explain you in the software itself, all right? So let's start with the first element of the dashboard. So I hope you have installed this module in the earlier lessons. So we'll start with a button, a simple button. Now, one thing you need to remember, when you take any element, doesn't matter a function or a button, if you see this orange symbol here, like this triangle, it means there is some problem. You have to configure this node, okay? This will not work. And to configure this node, you have to go inside and check what is happening. All right, so before I configure this node, I want to show you something to view the dashboard of your node red, what do you have to type? You have to type localhost 1880 slash UI and press enter. So you will see a dashboard window. If you see something like this, it says there is no dashboard elements present, so it will not show you anything. We took the button, we haven't configured it, we have to deploy it and then we can see the button here, all right? So just to mention you that this is the way you see the dashboard. UI is user interface, you can't change it, it's standardized. <coughs> So I go back to my button. So this is a button which, which can be used to push some value. So let's see what is inside. I open it. And first option is we have to define its location. So it says it's group, home is default. I go inside this one. And then I can give a name to my tab. So let's not give any name. Let's go by default options, default. This is by default, update. And I click done. Now you can see this, this icon is gone and I will deploy. And I don't change anything else. I go to my dashboard and I see a button here. So you can see that home is coming here as your tab. This is the name of your group. Okay, so if I want to change it, the easiest way is go to this, this button here, dashboard, and then you have a layout. So now you have a home and then you have a default and inside you have a button. Okay, so if I want to change the name of this home, I can just go here and type code and compile dashboard and I update. If I want to change the name of this default, I will change it like this is my input or I just type inputs and I update and deploy. So now you will see this is code and combined dashboard, inputs and button. So this color theme, this blue and white and blue text is by default. You can change that. So you can go to your theme and here this is light. You can make it dark and then you deploy. So when you go here, now it's a dark skin. So it's totally up to you. How do you want to see your dashboard? So let's go back to the default settings. And this is the button. So now the button is here, but it doesn't do anything. It's just the button because we did not configure anything inside. So let's go to debug window, open the button. So here, the label is the button. I can push, put some value, let's say start. And the important thing is the name of the button, which you want to see here and what this button should do. I will come to these properties later. When clicked, send payload. So payload, I want to send something. Let's say send a number. So I send a number 34. Topic of the button, if I want to de define, I can do that. Otherwise it's okay, but I can define input zero, let's say. Click done and take a debug window, a debug node here and this is your debug mode so you deploy now i would like to split the screen so that you can see it together so let this be here and this be here so that's my dashboard if i click start you will see input zero was a topic 34 is my message which is coming in my debug node. So again, this is how you send the message from the start. If I change this payload, payload to anything else, deploy, then I have 12. Very nice. You can also send a Boolean. So this will send true. Deploy. Now it will send a true signal every time I press it. If you wanna have another button, you can make it false. 
let be input one, deploy. Oh, let me connect here. So this was true and this was false. So let me change this to true and change this to false. Deploy. So this is sending me true signal. This is sending me a false signal. So you are sending a Boolean values true and false. Okay, very easy. Now let's customize this button a little bit. So when I open the button true, I have an option of putting an icon. I have an option to put a tooltip, color, and background. So I go come back to icon later. Let's go to the color. So for true, I say I want a green color. Okay, this is the color of the text. That's the background. So let's take background as green and I deploy. So this true is green now. For the false, I take background as red. So this is true and this is false. It's much like the HMI we do in the PLC and the HMI, but this is a free HMI. <laughs> so your purpose is solved. You have true false button coming from here. Okay, very nice. Now let's see another customization. This is the color of the text. If you want, you can change it, but I don't want to change it. And now comes the icon. If you want to see what icons you can do, go to this info settings and you will see the icon can be defined either as a material design icon or a font awesome icon. Okay, so let's go to material design icon and then you have a lot of options here. So for example, I want to have an icon. Let's see, just for the example, I take this send. So I will take this copy the send and put the icon here for the true, also for the false and apply. So you see there's a small icon here. So this will send true and this will send false. This is how you can customize the icons. Very nice. Let's see some more customization. Now let's see if I want to change the color of this button based on some external factor, not by typing it here all the time. How can I do it? Go back to this info settings. Here you can see there is a message.background property you need to assign. So what I do is I copy this and I put in the background for this as well. So in the background, I put message.background. I compile. So you can see that it goes to default blue color. But if I want to change the color, let's define some condition. So I take an inject node and I take a function node. And the function node I will write message.background is equal to this is a string, let's say green. Click done. So this will send a green to my true signal. And this will also send, I will copy this. Let's name it as red. Red. Let's name it as green. So this red will go here. So with this one timestamp, this green button will be, the true button will be green, red button will be red. Sorry, false button will be red. And if I want to have another color, let's make it gray. And I take another timestamp. And this will change the color of the buttons deploy. Now you will see I push the colors, green and red. The function is same. It will just say true and false. It's just about the colors. And this will make it gray. But still it will work. Now generally we fade the buttons. We make it gray when this is disabled. Okay. So how you can disable the button. That's also very nice to know. So in the green I will like to enable it. So I will type message dot enabled is true. Well, semicolon here as well. So this will enable the button. So I want to enable the button when these are colored. Okay. Don't forget the semicolon is very important. This is true. And when the buttons are gray, this is sorry, gray. Then I will make it false. So those are not enabled. Very easy. So now when I do like this, I can send the signal true and false. But if I make it gray, now they're disabled. So I can't click them. You see, I cannot click them anymore. These are disabled. Now enabled again. So you can have your different conditions where you want to enable or disable the button, change the color.
and define the payload as well. So this was a little bit about buttons. And if you want to see your value on your screen, I will show you a small example. So you go to your dashboard elements and go to text. And just take this text, I will push, name it as output. So it will read message.payload. Connect the output of both the buttons here to the output and deploy. So now you have an output and I would like to push the output a little bit down. So I will, so, okay, so this is in the inputs. I can make another group and name it as output. And then I will bring this output in this group. So open it up here and then deploy. So I have output here, this is input. So when I go true, this is showing the output is true. So this is showing basically now the payload. You can also read in your next text board, in our dashboard. So false, true, false, true. Yeah, so this was about how you can use your button and show a simple input output display on the output. You can also display zero in case if it's false, one in case if it's true, if you want to do that. Or you can also display on and off. That's also possible. So in this case, you just need to write a small function. So I will write a small function for you. So I can write if message.payload is true, message.payload is equal to on and return message. So in this case, for true, you have to put three equivalent to sign. Just remember that. And I will make an opening bracket and a closing bracket. So this is in case if it's true, I will copy this, paste. If it is false, then you want to show off. That's it. And this will come before this output node. Deploy. Now you will see true is on, false is off. Pretty nice. And then you can also use a button to disable the inputs. So what I can do is I can take another button. Oh, this will be interesting. So I take another button here and name it as disable inputs. So this button is just going to replace my timestamp. Deploy. So this disable input would disable these two. I can't use it now. If I want to enable it, I need another button, which can replace this timestamp. So I can name it enable inputs. And what you can do is this enable and disable buttons. This you can put in the settings. So this was input, output, you can make one more, one more group. So I will make one more group, rename it as settings. In the settings, you can push these buttons. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to add the buttons. Let me go full screen. Because it moves a lot. Okay, not in the output. Oh wait, I will take a spacer. Enable, disable. Spacer is just to get the space between two elements. So I download it. So now you have a settings where you can enable the inputs. So when you enable, this will work. If you disable the inputs, you can't work on it. So this was the first lesson on dashboard. And you can play around with the buttons, try to move the value, try to, you can also, what you can also do is you can solve your exercise based on the buttons, not from the, not based on the timestamp. So all the exercise which you did before, all the examples which you did before, you can perform using the buttons. So that can be your self exercise. Okay. So this is about buttons. Let's see what we do in the next video.